Hi everyone, Aiden here at the trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install this Curt Class 1 trailer hitch receiver on our 2022 Toyota Camry. So with this being a Class 1 hitch, it's going to be pretty limited in terms of weight capacity. But if you're looking to carry something like a bike rack or maybe a small cargo carrier or even tow a very small trailer, it can certainly get the job done and it really expands the function of your Camry. I think most commonly, it's probably going to be something like a bike rack and our neighbor today is going to be using this for a bike rack. With a 200 pound max tongue weight rating, it's going to be more than enough for most bike racks loaded up with some pretty standard bikes. Maybe not the best option for e-bikes, but with the Camry, your options are going to be very limited. Now, as far as how much weight it can pull, it's going to have a 2000 pound gross trailer weight rating. And again, that's how much weight it can pull. So just keep that in mind. If you do plan on using this with a small trailer, that that's going to be the limit. And you do want to check out what your Camry can handle and make sure that it's up to spec too. If it's not, go by the lowest rated component and make sure you're not overloading your vehicle or the hitch. When picking out hitch mounted accessories, you want to look for ones that can be mounted in an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube. And something else to look out for, especially in the world of bike racks, some of them may have an inch and a quarter shank, but be only approved for class two hitches due to the weight. So that's just something to look out for when picking out a class one hitch. Again, with your camera, your options are very limited. So that's just something that you're gonna have to watch for and make sure that you pick up accessories that are approved for class one use. Those accessories are gonna use a half inch hitch pin and clip to secure. The hitch doesn't come with one of those, but most accessories will. And then if you do plan on towing a trailer, the safety chain loops at the bottom are more than large enough to accommodate a wide variety of different styles of safety chain. More than likely it's gonna be these S-hook style and they fit on there just fine. Some measurements to keep in mind here are gonna be from the ground to the top inside edge of that receiver tube opening. That'll be 10 and three quarters of an inch. And that'll let us know what kind of rise or drop we need in a ball mount or what kind of ground clearance we're gonna be working with on other hitch mounted accessories like a bike rack. And then from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outer edge of the vehicle on the bumper here is gonna be two and a half inches. That's gonna be pretty good clearance. So for any folding accessories, you wanna know if you have room to fold. And I think in most cases you definitely should. The hitch does not sit super recessed under the back bumper. So I don't expect to have any clearance issues but I do think it sits far enough under that it keeps a nice clean look. And speaking of the looks, I really like the hidden cross tube. That's gonna be the part that stretches across your vehicle and bolts up to the frame rail. The only thing we see once the install is finished is that receiver tube. From standing height, you can see it a little bit, it doesn't sit completely hidden, but it's not bad by any means. The glossy powder coat finish is going to keep it protected from rust and corrosion, but also keep things looking nice and you kind of just miss it whenever you're looking for it. You don't really notice it all that much because it blends in with the bottom of the vehicle and it is pretty small. But as far as the installation goes, that's really all there is left to it. It's a little more involved because you do have to trim a few pieces, but it's not too bad. And it does utilize some existing factory holes in the frame rail to mount this up. So we'll walk you through the process right now so you can get this installed on your Camry at home. We're gonna start our installation off by lowering our exhaust. To do that, we're gonna raise a strap up and use that as a support so when our exhaust drops down, it's got a little bit of extra support. So I'm just gonna use a cam buckle strap and find two points kind of back by the back tires to hook into and tighten it up so it becomes snug against the exhaust there. And after we lower all of the hangers and get it removed from there, then we can lower the strap down to give us room to work and remove our heat shield. We'll be looking at three in total. The first one is towards the rear of the vehicle right here by the exhaust. Move forward to the other side and there's gonna be another one back here. And then towards where we had that strap set up, we're gonna have our third and final hanger. You can use a pry bar to get these pushed off or a large flathead screwdriver. And if you're having any issues getting them removed, spray it down with some soapy water to help lubricate it and give you a little more leeway with this. One trick is you can pull down on here to just expose it a little bit. All right. 
and we'll just repeat that process for all three locations. Once all those isolators are popped off, we can remove this or lower it just a little bit to give ourselves some more room to work above here where we can remove that heat shield. There's gonna be two nuts holding that in place that we'll remove, and then we can also turn our attention to this plastic underbody panel, but we'll start with that heat shield. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket to remove those nuts and set it to the side when it's undone because we will be reusing it and doing some trimming. For the plastic panel underneath, there's gonna be a series of push pin fasteners as well as plastic nuts a little bit further in. We're gonna start with the push pin fasteners using a trim panel tool. You can also use a flathead screwdriver if you don't have one. But with these, you wanna pop that middle section out first and with the middle section out, you can pop the base out. Set these to the side for reinstallation later. For those push pins, there's gonna be five along the back here. And then all on the side here, there's gonna be about three or four. Depends on if this one connects, but it looks like just three. So just make sure you get all of them to get it fully removed. For those plastic nuts that are further in, the first two that you see are gonna be 13 millimeter, and then the three that are further to the front of the vehicle are gonna be 10 millimeter. So just get those removed too. Sometimes you can do it by hand too. And if it feels like it's ever just free spinning, you might need to apply a little bit of downward pressure here just to keep some tension on there so that it fully releases. all those are moved, we can pull that panel down. Before we start working on getting things set up for the hitch, I'm actually gonna trim the heat shield. The instructions do give some measurements where you can mark off where you need to trim. You can also hold it up into place and see kind of where this lines up with the frame rail. I laid down some tape to kind of be some guidelines for me. You could use a paint marker or a Sharpie, something like that to help guide you too but you just wanna use something like some tin snips to cut this and make room for our mounting locations on the hitch. We need to go to both sides of the vehicle and enlarge some holes on the frame rail to mount up our hitch. The one thing with our installation today is that we've got a hybrid and the backup alarm here needs to be relocated. There's a 10 millimeter nut on the back that I'm just gonna undo for now. And we're just gonna set this to the side, either let it hang or just zip tie it up out of the way so that we can carry on with our installation. If we go to the back, just a little bit past where that backup alarm was, we're gonna have a plug right there. This can get popped out using a trim tool and it'll expose a hole that we're gonna need to enlarge large enough for the included carriage bolts in our kit and the spacer blocks that we need to slide in with it. Now you can use something like a rotary tool or a Dremel or a step bit to enlarge this hole. We're gonna use a step bit just cause it seems to work a little bit better for us. And you will repeat this on both sides. So as you're doing this, just take it slow, drill a little bit, check to see if it fits, drill a little bit, check to see if it fits and just keep going until you've got a hole that's large enough. Once you've identified that the hole is big enough for both the spacer block and the carriage bolt, we're gonna come back through with a file, clean up the edges a bit and paint over it so we don't have any exposed bare metal. Spray paint can do the trick just fine. It's gonna be covered up with the hitch anyway and underneath the vehicle. You'll repeat the drilling on the other side, but one thing that will differ from one side to the next, depending on whether or not you have dual exhaust. For us, we don't have dual exhaust, so we're gonna be going to the exhaust side and removing that hanger bracket. To get that bracket removed, you'll just use a 12 millimeter socket. And do save that 
because it is gonna get reinstalled later once the hitch is up there. For us, without the dual exhaust, the other side is just gonna have these plastic nuts. Not even really nuts, they're just kind of spacers that thread into the factory weld nut. So get those popped out to expose both of those holes. We'll show you the fish wiring process on the passenger side here since it's a little easier to see without the exhaust in the way. You essentially just wanna take your fish wire, your spacer block, and your carriage bolt. Thread the carriage bolt on to that fish wire. I'll try to keep my hands out of the way for you. And we'll push that carriage bolt up into the frame rail first, follow it up by the spacer block. And I'll feed the longer end in first. And we'll just pull it back down through like that. It's the same process on the driver's side with the exhaust. Once that's done on the driver's side, I'll reinstall the heat shield. With an extra set of hands, you can take your fish wires and feed it through the rear mounting hole on the hitch and flex out on this plastic fascia to rise this up into the proper position. Once you've got it in position around that fascia, you should be able to push this up in, take that fish wire off, and add your flange nut, being careful to not push this back up into the frame rail while you thread it in. The remaining hardware is gonna be the four smallest bolts in your kit, two for each side, Two of them will get used to reinstall that factory hanger for the exhaust, and then the other two will go on the non-exhaust side and just go into those weld nuts that we had from the factory. Now that all the other hardware is loosely installed, it's easier because the hitch can hold itself in place. We can move it around while everything's still kind of loose and make sure that all the holes align before tightening and torquing things down. And when you put this exhaust hanger back up, just make sure it's facing the right way with the curved portion right here pointing towards the rear so that it can reattach to the hangers later. We'll go back through and tighten all the hardware and then follow it up with the torque wrench to fully secure it. The torque specs can be found in your instructions. And if you don't have a torque wrench at home, you can always pick up one here at e-trailer or you can check them out from most local stores or rent them. And just make sure you repeat that process for the remaining hardware and check the instructions once again because the different hardware does have different torque specs. So make sure you torque it all down properly. To relocate the backup alarm, it's gonna be really easy actually. There's a small plastic clip here that's held into the bracket that kind of ties up this extra wiring. You can pinch it on the sides with some needle nose pliers to release it. And that's gonna give us enough slack to go from the old mounting location and just shift it back to this new stud over here. It'll resecure with the exact same hardware and we're not adding anything as far as new holes go to our Camry. We'll just add that back in, tighten it up, and that should be totally fine to basically be in the same spot it was before, just shift it back a bit. Now the last fun part of our installation is this plastic underbody panel. It will require some trimming, but the reason we waited until now to do it is because now that the hitch is in place, we can better see exactly what we need to trim. So I'm just gonna raise it back into position, kind of roughly in place, and we know that these holes at the front here should line up with these tabs on the fascia. So when I get that all lined up, properly, I need to shift that over a little bit, we can see that the hitch is lining up with this ridge right here pretty well. And the two tabs on either side of the hitch are gonna be all unobstructed. So we're just gonna trim around there back, I'm gonna say three inches. And we can always trim off more if we need to. So I'll start, probably start pretty conservatively. You can use something like those pair of tin snips that we used earlier or a Dremel, anything to just basically make that cut, see if it fits and cut more if we need to. So popping this into place, we're gonna do our best to get everything lined up. 
And I did want to show real quick, this is why we were conservative with that cut. It's making contact with the back of the hitch right now, but these holes aren't lining up. We just need a little bit more. So I'll go back through, trim a little bit of extra, and we'll show you the finished product once it's lined up properly and in place. Now you may have the issue where your fascia is getting flexed out by the front of the hitch. Now I've got it pulled out right now so we can actually access it. And we're just gonna trim just a little bit back. It doesn't need much at all. So it'll be just enough to take care of that minor obstruction we were having and we'll retest the fitment after that's trimmed. And here's what everything looks like fully trimmed up. I put the two pushpin fasteners on either side of it to just show you what that finished product will look like. You can see it's a very small cut that we had to do on the outer fascia and a little bit bigger on the underbody panel there, but overall it's a very clean look. And we're just gonna go back through and add the rest of our fasteners, making sure to get the holes lined up properly before we put them into place. And if they did maybe snap back into each other, just pull them back apart because they should just go smoothly in, push that inner tab and move on with the rest. Of course, not forgetting to do the plastic nuts too. The final step is getting our exhaust hung back up. These should go back on a lot easier than they came off. But if you need to, you can always break out the soapy water again if you need it. And once all three isolators are back, you can remove your support, whether it be a cam buckle strap or some blocks if you're on the ground. And then that'll do it. The installation process overall isn't too bad. It's a little more involved because of the trimming that you need to do, but I think you could do it at home. And the finished product is something that looks really clean and it's gonna expand the function of our 2022 Toyota Camry. Thanks for watching.